ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Locum23. Joining me for choices of the stories you play most wanted, Book 1, Chapter 7, House of Lies. Now playing as Dave Reyes, you keep through the Green Palms Trailer Park with Deputy Marshal Samantha Macy at your side. Your destination? Lot 47. Presumed location of wanted fugitive John Tall's trailer. Alright, Macy. Let's say we get there and Tall's not home. We're just gonna hide in the bushes till a warrant comes through? We have those evidence bags from your trunk, don't we? I'm thinking we kick the door down and look for leads. Whoa there, Desperado. I'm down to bend the rules. But that's pretty much full-blown breaking them. Obviously, you don't spend enough time in trailer parks. You say that like it's a bad thing. Motor vehicle, ex uh, motor vehicle exception of 1925, pal. We can search a vehicle with probable cause, even without a warrant. And, as it turns out, mobile homes qualify. So as long as they're on wheels... Wow, Macy. I had no idea you were so knowledgeable, crafty. I want to go with knowledgeable to recite a law that old. Oh, I am very well versed in trailer park law. After all, you gotta know the book if you're going to be by the book. Macy, just so you know, that was the lamest thing anyone's ever said. Sam looked ready to say something back, when you both hear a distinct whining from behind the trailers. A stray puppy, looking thin and unkept, wanders out. Shh, pup, don't blow our cover. Oh, I think he's cute. Don't you think he's cute? Reyes, pull it together. We're about to move on a killer's hideout. Just saying, you see those adorable little paws? <laughs> the dog wanders off. Sam shakes her head as the two of you round a corner to Lot 47. A round-on trailer rests there on the edge of a slope leading down into the sea. Texas Plates quickly you run them on your phone. Yep, it's flagged, stolen from a junkyard in Odessa ten days ago. This is his place. The two of you creep forward. Think he's home? We can help. Alright, let's go in. Sam gears up to kick the door down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whatever happened to Finesse? We'd be better off going in quiet-like. Oh, what? You also know how to pick locks? Maybe. What do I do? Pick the lock? Or let Sam kick it down. Pick the lock. Walk up to the door and pull a thin paperclip out of your pocket. You unfold it delicately, press it in the lock, and twist it around. You've got three seconds to impress me. Three, two, click. The door springs open. You chose the stealthy bridge. Impressed? Let me guess. You picked that up while consulting on some fancy movie about prison breaks? Nope. I was just really in the magic in the sixth grade. Ready for this? Sam unholsters a revolver. Born ready. You and Sam burst into the trailer. And find it empty. Damn it! He's not here. You press an arm over your mouth as a thick, rancid smell washes over you. But I, I think he left a garbage heap of evidence. You look around the trailer. It's disgusting cluttered with messes of crumpled trash, moldy takeout food, and 
dank, sweaty clothes. A bloody pile of bandages, disinfectant, and sutures lie on the bed. Uh, looks like Tull's fixed up a shoulder after you shot him. If he ain't here, then where the hell is he? There has to be something here that'll tell us where he went. Looking around you, you notice five things of interest. A photo, pinned by the bed. A sawed-off shotgun, hanging on the wall. A worn-out notepad on the table. A steel box under the cot. And a door to the toilet. Alright, let's check out the photo. You walk over and pick up the photo. Ah, uh, what a candid, beautiful family. <laughs> What do you have there? A photo. Looks like Tall and his element. His file didn't mention a family. He doesn't have one as far as I know. He did run with the Garrett clan in the Ozarks for a while. Uh, this might be them? Good to know he's got a soft spot. Carefully bag the photo and take it. Investigate the shotgun. You take a good look at the shotgun. Lever action, sawed off, vintage. Looks like we found Toll's weapon of choice. That is not Toll's gun. What? I mean, it's the gun he's been using, but it's not his gun. She reaches out and touches it, running her fingers along an engraving on its side. It belonged to Bill, my mentor. He loved this gun, called it Old Genevieve. Toll sawed it off, desecrated it. He... Her throat tightens up. Bill taught me to shoot, taught me everything I know. She trails off lost in a memory. What do I do? Tell me all about it. Good thing we're in the trailer and we're gonna have memory time. Bill was like a father to me. He shaped me into the person I am today as much as anyone else. This gun, old Genevieve, it meant something to him. Something profound. I don't know the full story behind it. Sam closes her eyes. But I know enough. Ooh, I was hoping for memory flashback. And now the music cues. <clears throat> Seven years ago, in a wide stretch of desert in Texas, you and trainee Samantha Macy, you stand behind a wooden barrel holding a brand new James and Hickok revolver. Next to you is your mentor, Bill Holton. Alright, Cody Locks, line up the sights. Have a take a deep breath and take that sucker down. You line up the sights and inhale. Down the field, 30 yards away, an old soup can sits on a red desert rock. You got this, Sam. You exhale, and hit with miss hit. You shoot, nailing the can dead center. It flies off into the desert with a loud ping. Hot damn! Nice shooting, kid. What can I say? I'm a natural. Real humble, too. Now, if you don't mind, Bill unslings a shotgun and turns around run a number of paper targets of criminals, and then set up at close range. Moving with tactical precision, Bill weaves his way around them, firing and reloading. When he's done, he's fired five shots, and all eight targets have been shredded. Got a little pinup aggression, old-timer? Old Genevieve just can't stand the dopey grins on these paper some bitches. He ejects the shell casings and sets the shotgun down. You watch him, thoughtfully. Ask you a question. 
Shoot. Well, don't shoot, actually, but go ahead and ask. What do I ask? Why do you call your gun Old Genevieve? Have you ever shot anyone with that gun? How about let's all I would call her Old Genevieve? When I was a little boy, my parents sent me off to a board school. St. Adelaide's School for Boys. The woman that ran at Genevieve brought me up. She was a mean old broad, tough as nail, with a scowl that could curdle milk and a mean hand with a ruler. She taught me how to read, how to tie a knot, how to start a fight, and how to end one. She taught me right from wrong. One night when I was ten years old, some passing drunk broke into the school. I don't know what he wanted. Maybe to steal the silver candlesticks. Like a villain out of some storybook. Either way, he got spotted sneaking through the dorms. He grabbed me out of my bed and put a pocket knife to my neck. And said he'd kill me if they didn't hand over the, all the valuables. The other boys were pissing themselves. Nuns were scared and hiding. But Genevieve, well, she didn't hesitate. She unlocked a special cabinet in her office. Took out all of her fa took out her father's level action shotgun. She pointed at the drunk, gave him one chance to let me go. Bill pulls down his collar, showing the scar on his neck. Three cut deep cuts. The drunk didn't listen, so Genevieve blew his head clean off. Then and there. Holy crap! One way to put it, like I said, Genevieve told me right from wrong, and she taught me that sometimes you just gotta pull that trigger. A warm breeze blows over the two of you. You look out across the red rocks at the sun just starting to set. After you've shot one, someone uh, killed them. How do you know if you did the right thing? Bill cocks his head at you with a sad smile. You don't? Sam falls silent. He was right. Yeah, he always was. Investigate the... Notepad, steel box. Let's just go down the list. You pick up the notepad. Anything on it? Nope. It's blank. Just our luck. Looks like a page got ripped off, maybe. The text can get something out of it? You back the notepad and tuck it in your jacket. Investigate the steel box. Sam kneels down to get a closer look at the steel box. There's a combination padlock on this. See a code anywhere? No sign of one yet. Let's keep an eye on. Hang on. There's a little slot here. Maybe I can see through to what's inside. Uh-oh. What's oh? He's got grenades. Like, just a bunch of grenades. Look! You peer through the slot in the padded, padlocked box. Oh, joy. Okay, these pack some serious punch. They could blow a hole straight through this trailer. If Toll's got this kind of weaponry, that means he's nowhere near done in L.A. just yet. You step back and look around the trailer. So we've got a blank notepad. A picture of some creepy clan, and the gun Tull stole. No sign of who hired him or where he is now. There's gotta be something else. Sam surveys the trailer carefully, and her gaze stops at the closet at the far end. She walks over and throws it open. Holy... Crap? Inside the closet is a shrine. The entire wall is covered in photos, newspaper clippings, and magazine covers. And every one of them is of pop star 
Haley Rose. A huge red heart has been drawn around them in a substance that looks like, suspiciously, like blood. Marisol would have a field day with this. How many words are there for stalker? You try to take it all in. There's press photos of Haley at her concert, stills printed from YouTube videos, interviews with passages highlighted. You take photos and of the clippings with your phone and send them to the forensics team. Look, this clipping about her debut album is from 2011. He must have been collecting these the whole time he was in jail, just itching for the chance to break out and put this whatever this is together. An epiphany hits you like a bucket of ice water. You step back from the shrine, sucking in your breath. Whew. Macy, you realize what this means. Haley hired Tall. Tall was hired to kill Haley. No one hired Tall. Tall's a straight up basket case. He's obsessed with Haley Rose, a stalker style. Apparently he has been for years. This right here, this is the sick bastard's version of a love letter. The people he killed. In the past, yeah, he did it for cash, but since he got to LA, he's been killing for love. Gavin Roth, Jessica Drink Green, they wronged Haley by leaking those news. In his head, Tall must have thought he was killing them for her. That if he took out her enemies, protected her, he she'd love him and that the way he loved her. Unbelievable. Well, this whole time I thought we could find Toll by finding a new hired him, but no one did. He's not a hitman on a contract, he's a creep with a crush. Why Haley Rose, of all the musicians and actresses in the world? Why her? I think I know why. You do? You lead to Sam, to the very back of the trailer, where you rifle through a messy drawer. On the top of it, you find a battered CD player dusted with cigarette ashes and hit play. Haley's voice crackles out. Sirens flicker in your taillights, your long lost love's your only flaw. You kill, you steal, you burn the daylight, cause you're my broken bad outlaw. It's the song, Outlaw. This hillbilly moron actually thinks the song is about him. You freeze up. As you hear a shotgun rack behind you, you spin around to see Sam stiff, teeth clenched, and a hulking shape lurking in her shadow. Press the shot off shotgun to the small of her back. Call me a hillbilly again, Piggy, and I'll splatter blonde here all over you. <laughs> Sorry, Reyes. Bastard snuck in on us. You whip out your pistol in a blur, and level it to Toll's direction, but he's well hidden behind Sam. You can barely make out the corner of his head, darting back and forth. Sam looks you in the eyes and mouths. Take. The. Shot. Nope. We learned! I remember, we learned. Mm -mm. You hold back, plus we don't have a, a good shot at all. This was actually one of my first mistakes ever in any of the series that actually got us killed. So this is brings back memories, really good. You hold back, tightening your grip on the pistol. Damn it, I don't have a shot. Yeah, you'd literally have to shoot your partner. Atta boy, piggy, don't do nothing stupid. Now put the gun down on the floor. 
I need to keep him talking, get his attention off of Sam, and rile him into doing something stupid. I said put down the gun. I got the upper hand here, boy. I think there's something you're forgetting. Hey, what's that? I'm a cop? No shit, really. I know your secret. What the hell are you talking about? Haley Rose, your sweetheart. Shut your mouth, you don't know nothing. Oh, really? I didn't see your super creepy shrine to her. I mean, come on. Don't you think she's a little bit young for you? I said shut up. I mean, seriously, do you think she's gonna go for you? Uh, she dates rock stars and heartthrobs, not dudes who look like they just crawl out of a swamp. One more word. One more, and I'll kill you both right where you stand. Come on, tall, let's be reasonable here, okay? We're all adults. No one's gotta do anything hasty. No one's got to get hurt. I might just be a hillbilly moron, Piggy, but I'm having a hard time seeing how that one plays out. How about we make a deal? Take this outside. You wanna go outside? Fight like men? I just wanna know how badly I can kick your ass. Oh, <laughs> you're out of your mind if you think you can take me. An old flabby redneck who sneaks up on people with a sawed off? I could take you with one hand tied behind my back. I'd... I'd whoop you before you could blink. I'd snap your piggy neck. I'd... I'd... Run out of breath? Shut up! Outside the open door, a dog barks, sirens howl somewhere far away. Tall sweats and adjusts his grip on his gun while Sam glares daggers at you. Getting real tired of this gun jammed into my back. And I'm getting real tired of listening to your whiny voice. What do you say we get this over with? You shoot her, huh? Just like that. Kill her in cold blood. Damn right I will. I gotta say, Tall, you're a real outlaw? What? What'd you say? Oh, you know, an outlaw. You grin and begin singing. Sirens flicker in your taillights. Your long lost love's your only flaw. Shut your mouth. You kill, you steal, you burn the daylight. Don't you say it. Cause you're my broken, bad outlaw. Arrgh! Tall shoves Sam forward, giving you a clear shot. You line up your gun sights. When Sam swings back around, blocking your shot, and slams Tall in the face with an elbow. Arrgh! Tall staggers back, blood streaming out of his nose. He raises a shotgun right at Sam. When the dog you saw earlier scammers into the trailer's open door and barks at Tall. <coughs> what the? Startled, Tall turns as he fires, missing you both and instead exploding the stack of dirty plates next to you. The lights flicker as the shot ricochets in the tight spot. Too close, too close! With a roar of fury, Tall kicks the dog away and lunges out the door, slamming it shut after him. Sam runs toward the door, but she's too late. Tall's barred it with something from the other side, and it won't budge. No, no! You're not getting away again! She spins around towards you, furious. What the hell is wrong with you, Reyes? What is? What? What's wrong with me? 
you just stand there blabbing for an hour instead of shooting? This isn't therapy session! Yeah, because I use my words like a goddamn adult, and I... Wait. Do you smell burning? Oh. You look towards the trailer's far end, where thick black smoke is seeping in. Tall has set it on fire. Oh. Crap. I was gonna say, oh shit. <laughs> Alright, well I hope y'all did enjoy that. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Look forward to chapter 8. Hell or high water. And I hope y'all once again did enjoy. And, uh, well, until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace out.